one down in our nation's capital. Let's go there live by the miracle of satellite technology. White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders joins us from in front of the White House. Sarah, almost Merry Christmas to you. Good morning. Merry Christmas to you guys. Thank you very much. So we know that the House has passed this bill. It's got six billion dollars, about six billion dollars worth of wall money in it. Now it goes over to Mitch McConnell and the Republicans in the Senate. Will they be able to pass this thing? I certainly hope so. Uh, the House Republicans delivered a huge uh, victory last night for border security, and we're very hopeful that the Senate will come through and help protect the American people. We have to put a stop to the massive inflow of drugs, human trafficking, and terrorists coming across our border. We need to know who's coming in, why they're coming, and what they're going to do when they get here. So we have to have an orderly process, and we need a wall, and we need border security in order to have that. We have to protect the people of this country, and the president is going to stand firm and make sure that that happens one way or another. Sarah, Senator uh, Steve Daines, he tweeted out that the Senate can do the same by eliminating the filibuster, 51 votes, same as we do for judges. Is that something that you think they'll take seriously and actually, actually do? They should. This is such an important issue, and it's something that all of America wants to see happen. And frankly, Americans want to be protected. The Senate has a constitutional duty and a constitutional authority to actually protect our country. We can't have, be a sovereign country if we don't have borders and we don't have protection of American citizens. And so we hope that they'll step up and do their jobs today before they go home and uh, take vacation. Yeah. For Christmas. This is something that's so important, and we hope that they'll do whatever is necessary to get the job done. Well, well we don't know anything that's on the schedule. Yesterday, I know a lot was ad libbed in the afternoon, and they made a huge impact and had a substantial vote that showed that Nancy Pelosi uh, was actually called out and proven flat out wrong. You got the vote, you passed out of the House. But is there well, anything that's not the first time, Brian? I don't suspect it'll be the last time. Nancy Pelosi that was, that has was been the most around a long time, Sarah. and I think she's going to be wrong a whole lot over the next couple of years as well. Yeah, but she she was so blatantly wrong and such a black and white. She must feel humiliated today, to to a degree. But I'm wondering, the way it used to be is that the House has one vision and the Senate has another. They work it out and talk. Is there a sense? that they might want to go home for Christmas and maybe meet halfway on some of these issues. Do you know of anything on the schedule, whether visits to the White House or meetings on the Capitol? Uh, look, we'll do whatever we need to do and whatever we can do to help the process. But at this point, it's up to the Senate. I, I, one thing that I, I think has been missed and didn't get a lot of coverage yesterday was what we have worked out, what this administration has been able to do in conjunction with the Mexican government and right. the massive and monumental moment that took place yesterday where catch and release has ended. And it's a sad day in America when the Mexican government is doing more to protect the American people than Senate Democrats. I hope that they will not let that be the case by the end of the day, and they will work with us and work with the president and Senate Republicans to get this done and let everybody go right. home and let us start building the wall and let us start protecting our border. Well, uh, we have heard a lot of rhetoric on both sides. Uh, the big question is, uh, will the president still be going to Mar-a-Lago for his two-week Christmas vacation, even if there is a government shutdown, which he says, I'm, I'm okay with, according to Politico? If, if there is a government shutdown, the president will, will stay here uh, in Washington, D.C. Uh, but again, we're hopeful that people will step up and, and, and do their jobs today and Re get that done. Sarah, realistically, what are the odds? I know you're not a betting woman, but what are the <laughs> odds that uh, the Senate will pass something and there will not be a government shutdown? That's a question you'll have to ask the Senate. Uh, I think they have a they're much busy. better feel I'm for what they're you, capable what, of doing. What, what, is the, what is the uh, philosophy right now at the White House about it? Uh, the president's been extremely clear. If they don't get this done, then he's shutting down the government. And uh, he said that just a few minutes ago via Twitter. And the president's not going to back down on this. And he's going to stand right. firm because it's so important. And it's such uh, a vital part of our democracy to make sure that we're protecting yeah. our borders and it was protecting too, the people of the It's too bad country. the Republicans were so slow to realize that. Meanwhile, Secretary of Defense Mattis has decided to retire in a lengthy letter. I looked everywhere, Sarah. Now, any praise for the president? The president praised him. Uh, he's leaving, basically, it seems, uh, because of the way the president treats our allies, in his view, and the pullout in Syria and Afghanistan seems to have been too much. Uh, how bad uh, is the relationship right now? 
Look, they continue to have a good relationship, but they, they disagree on a number of fronts that he outlined. And um, But at the end of the day, the American people elected one person to be the commander in chief and to make decisions. The president listens to all of his national security team, of which is a big group. He takes their advice. And at the end of the day, he makes the decision. That's what he was elected to do. And if Secretary Mattis doesn't feel like he's the right person to fill that job, I think it was uh, the right thing and an honorable thing that he did in stepping aside to put somebody in a position he feels like is the right person for that time. Look, and he's also, he served the president and this country. Uh, he served in this administration for two years, and he served the country and the military for over four decades. Uh, an incredible person, an incredible servant to this country, and somebody that we have the highest amount of respect for and wish him very well, and look forward to continuing to work with him over the next two months. Let's not forget, he's not just walking out the door. This will be an orderly process, and it will continue to be mm -hmm. a good relationship over these next couple Who's of on months. the list for his replacement? I, I think there are a lot of people that are on that list. The, the good news is we have a strong deputy uh, at the secretary uh, at the Defense Department that can help hold the right. ground while we transition and look for a new person and go through the confirmation process. Right, Sarah, it, you know, a lot of people, when the president announced the, uh, the drawdown in Syria and Afghanistan, if you're watching a lot of the channels, uh, people are very concerned about it. But if you've been watching Donald Trump for the last couple of years, this is something he has been talking about. This is one of the reasons people voted for him. Exactly. He, he Anybody that says they're surprised by this has simply been living under a rock. The president has been talking about this since the campaign. He brought it up again eight months ago, six months ago. He's wanted to bring our troops home. Yeah. Look, our goal and the president's purpose of continuing to be in Syria was to defeat ISIS. We've defeated the territorial caliphate. Ninety-nine percent of ISIS has been wiped out of Syria. The president doesn't want to be in the middle of another civil war in the Middle East and put American right. lives on the line for the that purpose. He wants to bring the men and women of our armed forces home, and that's what he Sarah, pledged to do, and that's exactly what he's doing. Sarah, he's giving Russia a big win. Vladimir Putin praised him. He also is doing exactly what he criticized President Obama for doing. He said President Obama is the founder of ISIS. He just refounded ISIS because they got 30,000 men there, and they're already striking back uh, with our uh, would be evacuation. The president's got it, he's really uh, on the griddle with this. Brian, that, but Brian, I, I uh, have to respectfully and <laughs> vehemently disagree with you. The idea that the president has had anything to do with helping ISIS reemerge is absolutely Leaving is outrageous. Leaving is the helping. president has put so much emphasis on rebuilding and making sure we have the strongest military on the face of the planet. If ISIS wants to pick a fight with somebody, they sure as heck don't want to pick one with Donald Trump because he will destroy them and defeat them. And he's made that extremely clear. We've wiped out 99 percent of ISIS in Syria. The president doesn't want to be in the middle of a civil okay. war in the Middle East and continue to put American lives right. on the line. Words if are, we need to fight the ISIS the again, is the president's not said. afraid to do that. The, All right, Sarah, thank you so much. We wish you a very Merry Christmas. Thank you very thank much. Thank you so much. You're Merry welcome. Christmas, guys. The president's sharing a solution to avoiding the shutdown, tweeting, Mitch, use the nuclear option to get it done. Our country is counting on you. Here to react is former White House press secretary and senior advisor, advisor for America First Action. Hey, Sean, good, good to morning. see you. Good to see you. Don't you wish you were working there now? <laughs> <laughs> What's going to happen? Do you think there'll be a shutdown? I, I think that's where we're headed right now. Um, but I think that there are options. I think the president uh, understands that this isn't just an issue that's important to his base, but it's important to the nation. It's about national security. It's about human trafficking. It's about stopping the flow of illegal drugs over our border. And we've had two years of excuses, the, the Congress telling him next time, next time, next time, and he's drawing a line in the sand make it very clear that this is the last shot that we have. Because the reality is Nancy Pelosi takes over the House. Uh, January 5th, and right. we're not going to see any action. So if we're going to fight, this is the fight now. Sure. And it, uh, Sean, it looked a couple of days ago like the president was going to cave on the wall uh, because it looked like uh, the House was going to wind up uh, with no money for the wall, Senate no right. money for the wall. It seemed like he was okay with that until Mark Meadows, according to Politico, picked up the phone, called him and said, hey, Mr. President, you but, ran on this and conservatives have your back. But he's absolutely right. 
I mean, and that's and that's not just conservatives. I think this this spans a much broader spectrum of Americans that understand. But what's who was giving the president? That but I, I think advice. My, my my guess is that you had a lot of congressional leaders that said, "Mr. President, uh, it's Christmas time. We've always lost shutdowns." But it took reminding people that the last time we had this shutdown, the Schumer shutdown, mm -hmm. it was it wasn't until President Trump that Republicans actually started winning on this idea of fighting for principles, fighting for the right policies, fighting for things that make the country better. And if we look at what happened last time, when we stand on principles, when we stand on what's right for the country, we win. Well, also, uh, you know how this thing could play out. Give me a couple of scenarios as this plays out. In the perfect world, the House has a, a bill, the Senate has a bill. Let's get, let's split the difference. But we're not in the perfect yeah, but, world. But, but, so but, tell me how we work this. So look, I mean, the House sent the bill back over with five billion in border security, which is what Plus. the president wants. Now the Senate's got to act. We need 60 votes in the Senate to get anything done. I don't see Democrats budging. That's why you see President Trump now telling the leader, Leader McConnell, use the nuclear option. Go to 50 He's plus one. What do you think, what do you think about that? And, and I think this is, the, again, this is the fight to have. We know that Democrats did everything that they could on, when they controlled the Senate to get what they needed to get done. This is the time, this is the right issue to do this. What if the Republicans, they vote for the nuclear option, that happens, can they vote back? Can they vote it to no, be reversed? Well, no, no, but once, yeah. it, since the House sent it over, if the, if the Senate goes to 50 plus one and passes it, it goes to the president's desk and it's a done deal. Are you going to feel good about that if it's a majority Democrat in the Senate and it's President uh, Cory Booker? Well, I don't think that'll happen. But if there's a Democrat, when a Democrat <laughs> eventually <laughs> gets the White House. And, and, and look, look, the, the, here's what we have to understand. The Democrats, when they were in charge, did everything they could to change the rules to benefit them. We've got to start playing by the same, in the same way. We are We've with the judges. We've got to start fighting. And I think that's what you've seen with judges. But it was them that made the first move last time, Harry Reid. It was McConnell who took this big, brave step to get Kavanaugh and, and uh, Gorsuch through. Let's do it again. These are the right things to fight on. Exit question. The odds of a shutdown tonight at midnight? 70-30. In Pro. favor of? Yeah, I don't okay. know how long it lasts, but I think that, that we're gonna, they're going to try all day long to get that deal with Democrats. I don't know that they're going to get it, and I think we may need a little additional time. Pelosi already looks bad. All she right. promised he didn't have the votes. She had the votes. It turns out that didn't happen. Sean, Merry Christmas. Hey, Merry thank Christmas, you. Merry Christmas Sean. to you guys. All right.